Welcome to a look back at Sheffield Wednesday's 2008-2009 season. Now the Owls ended the last campaign with successive wins over Norwich and Leicester to preserve their championship status. But going into Brian Laws' second full season in charge, the boss knew that both the fans and the board were desperate for a push for the playoffs. Owls fans were looking to banish the memories of last season's disastrous opening to the campaign and after just 30 seconds Marcus Tudgai settled the home fans' nerves, his shot looping over keeper Diego Penny. And they didn't have to wait long either for a second goal and just the fourth minute Burton's slip ball through to Soji was smashed into the top corner leaving Burnley keeper no chance at all giving Soji a chance to show Wednesday fans his new goal celebration. Burnley's million pound signing from Scunthorpe, Martin Patterson pulled the goal back two minutes later, heading home Wade Elliott's precise cross at the near post, but Wednesday hadn't finished yet. This time it was Jermaine Johnson who was troubling the Burnley defence as he cut inside and crossed to the far post to find an unmarked Soji who side-footed past Penny to make it 3-1 with only 17 minutes played. The Owls could have scored more before Clark bustled through the Clarets' defence and squared the ball to Tudgai. His finish was calmness personified. A great start for the Owls, who went top of the championship. The Millers had won on their previous three visits to Hillsborough, but the home side started the brighter. Clark's header disallowed by referee Mr Miller a coincidental name for the Durham official. Wednesday kept up the pressure on their League Two opponents and veteran Steve Watson made room for himself on the edge of the area before letting fly with a sublime curling effort which had Rotherham keeper Andy Warrington beaten. On 14 minutes, Dutchman Esayhas wriggled between two defenders and unleashed a powerful left foot drive which left the Rotherham keeper no chance at all. The Alf fans were still celebrating the opener when straight from the restart a clever ball over the defence from Pablo Mills was volleyed home by Alex Rhodes. Richard Wood was given little chance and just like that it was one apiece. The woodwork was acting as another defender for the visitors three minutes before the break as Sayhas rifled in a 30-yard effort only to be denied by the frame. But in the 116th minute, the game seemed to swing dramatically in the Owls' favour. Rotherham defender Joseph had shown a straight red card. The resultant free kick was superbly curled home by the left foot of Asayhas, and the Owls looked certain to progress into the next round. But in the 119th minute, and with Rotherham throwing everyone forward, disaster struck for Brian Laws's men. A goal-mouth scramble led to an effort from Harrison, which looked to have crossed the line, but seconds later from close range, Reuben Reid put the ball into the net and ensured the tie would go to penalties. Pablo Mills beat Grant with a first spot kick before Clark converted from 12 yards for Wednesday. Harrison restored the Miller's advantage before Hasehas hit the outside of the upright. Hudson scored for United, as did O'Connor for the Owls. Todd netted from the spot, and despite McAllister's success, it was left for Reuben Reed to fire the Millers into the next round. A trip to Molyneux was next up for Brian Laws' men, but Mick McCarthy's team looked better from the off. Lee Grant on top form to deny Matt Jarvis early on. Against the run of play, though, the Owls scored first. A Sayhast easily beating George Ella Kobe before slotting past Wayne Hennessy with a near post drive. Just before the half hour mark, though, Chris Iwellamo, acquired from Charlton during the summer, headed Wolves level following a right wing cross and went from bad to worse for Wednesday. Eight minutes into the second period, and Matt Jarvis was tripped in the area. Mansfield official Mr. Jones had no hesitation in pointing to the spot. And ex Manchester United forward Sylvan E. Banks Blake made no mistake with the penalty. On the hour mark, Wolves extended their advantage, Kitely racing away down the right. He beat the defence with his speed 
only to see his effort come back off the upright. Oh, Wellamo was on hand to bundle in the rebound, and that made it 3-1 to Wolves. Wednesday held out until the first minute of stoppage time. Edwards picking up a flick from Ebanks Blake before beating Grant. Still smarting from last weekend's defeat at Molyneux, Wednesday were the better side throughout this encounter. Jermaine Johnson's run and pass finding Tudguy, whose miscued shot spun the wrong side of the post early on. The Owls, though, deservedly took the lead on 21 minutes. Tommy Spurs' long throw wreaking havoc in the Preston defence, unable to clear the ball properly, and Sean McAllister capitalised, looking in the loose ball acrobatically. Wednesday went looking for a second, but at the other end, keeper Grant had to be at his best to keep out an effort from Chris Sedgwick, getting down quickly to his left. With only 30 minutes left to play, a 60-yard ball over the top found Sedgwick on the right-hand flank. Maybe by a slip from Tommy Spur, he was able to get it to the byline and cross for Chaplow, who netted for North End. Swansea though who opened the scoring on 36 minutes there wasn't much Grant could do to stop Ferry Bodders 30 yard pile driver and the Swans almost extended their advantage too right back Williams somehow managed to hit the post from close range with this header but with 20 minutes left Tudguy found Steve Watson with a chip cross to the penalty spot and Watson powered home the header despite having only been on the pitch for 30 seconds. And Wednesday came within inches of snatching all three points late on as well. Jermaine Johnson took the ball out on the left wing and fed the ball into Tommy Spur, whose cross come shot came back off the bar with De Vries in no man's land. Fortune was certainly on their side as they took the lead in the 22nd minute. A long throw from the right caused problems for the Hornets' defence and Tudguy's optimistic back heel flicked off John Eustace to leave Martin Poon wrong-footed on the line. And Wednesday grabbed their second 11 minutes after the restart. Spur played a 1-2 with a Sayhas before brushing into the box and beating Poon from a tight angle. 2-0 to the Owls. Brian Laws may have been talking about the threat of Kevin Doyle following his hat-trick against Palace last time out, and he saw the Royals hit man's threat first-hand after just five minutes. And it got worse for Laws on Wednesday just four minutes later. Again, Kevin Doyle the scorer. This time, after some tidy work on the edge of the Owls area, Doyle's shot deflected in off McMahon. Fifteen minutes in, it was 3-0 to the home side. A free kick on the left was curled in and found the head of Andre Bikey, who thumped in the header from 12 yards out. The Owls held out until the interval, but Reading continued the assault on the Owls' net. This Route 1 effort finished off by Noel Hunt, five minutes after the restart. 62 minutes played and Doyle completed his hat-trick, this time creating space on the edge of the box before rifling past Grant with some aplomb. 90 seconds later, Bobby Convey's run down the left found Hunt in space to slot past Grant and challenged. All this draw at Hillsborough largely due to the heroics of Lee Grant, but it could have been better for Wednesday if Marcus Tudguy's crosshairs were set a few inches lower. This 30-yard effort going very close indeed. And it was Tudguy again who reacted the quickest to get on the end of this free kick. His diving header giving goalkeeper Richard Wright plenty to think about. At the other end, Grant was at his best too, somehow managing to deflect Norris's shot onto his own crossbar before smothering the ball at the second attempt. Two stunning Wednesday goals put paid to Charlton at the Valley despite falling a goal behind after 20 minutes to Varney's effort, which was scrambled home from six yards out. Wade Small then decided to take matters into his own hands and ran past the entire Charlton defence before beating keeper Weaver, the ball going in via the inside of the post. Three minutes later, and having had a great view of small strike, Tudguy embarked on a similar run, this time going along the edge of the box, 
but with the same result, the defence beaten and the ball in the back of the net. Three well-deserved points for the Owls. Forrest hit the ground running in this encounter at Hillsborough and tested Grant early on. The keeper doing well to backpedal and tip this effort over the bar. Three minutes after the break, the deadlock was broken as Sayhas left foot shot, taking a wicked deflection off Ian Brecken, leaving goalie Paul Smith completely wrong-footed on his line. Wednesday should have had a second goal too, another pinpoint cross finding Dion Burton, who somehow headed wide from just six yards out. The final whistle was music to Brian Laws' ears, it was relief and emotion obvious to all, as Wednesday went 11 league games unbeaten at home. Grant failed to hold a shot from Paul Gallagher. Jamie Mackey's shot looked to be well wide, but deflected off the unlucky Beavers into the Wednesday goal. Two minutes later, the Pilgrims made it 2-0. Chris Clark starting the move, which led to Mackey racing down the right and supplying the cross for Gallagher to tap in at the back post. And it was 3-0 to the home park outfit on the half hour. Rory Fallon with the acrobatic effort, which was well saved by Grant, but Mackey was on hand to tap in and give Argyle an unassailable lead. And in the last minute, Argyle completed their biggest win of the season, another Luke Summerfield corner, this time met by an unchallenged Marcel Seep. Championship have five games coming up in the next couple of weeks now. A little flurry of midweek games. Mistake there. And this is fed wide for Jermaine Johnson, and he's wasted it. Set up beautifully by O'Connor. This is where this uh, idea somebody's got about having a, a referee, an official behind the goal looking at all this might come in handy. Goalies come for that. Is good punch. It's played back in there by Cottrell. Still not away. Howard deflected. Wondered for a moment if that was going to creep in, didn't you? Well, that deflection could have been crucial, couldn't it? When they do, that could spell trouble for Wednesday. Oh, good. Well, Kilgallen involved there in that challenge with McAllister, and it's a red card. He's off. Straight away, didn't like the height of the challenge. Kevin Blackwell is furious, and Shepherd United are down to ten men. Well, that is a big, big, big decision. Wednesday take advantage, Spur plays it in, Ehio getting it away. Took a deflection on the way through off a Sheffield United head, that one. Well, I'm thinking it's confidence, ambition to take the strike on from there. Shows real confidence and it gets a deflection. Watson feeds it wide. Here is McMahon. In towards O'Connor, the goalkeeper had to win that with his punch, he did so. Thought for a moment the little midfield player was going to get there first. Beavers. The goalkeeper came, didn't get it. Watson! He's going to score! Steve Watson for Sheffield Wednesday! Massive mistake! just helps it back in and over everybody's head. That's a brilliant, brilliant goal from Steve Watson. And if Paddy Kenny got injured, and he's been sent off, so goodness knows who does the job now. An interesting one, wouldn't it? Here's O'Connor. Goes down, and it's a penalty kick. Sheffield Wednesday get the penalty. Mike Dean was perfectly placed. Gary Speed with the challenge. He's already been put, by the way. No further punishment, but Mike Dean sees this as a penalty. Well, he's absolutely right. Gary Speed whips away the legs of James O'Connor, and it's a stone wall. A penalty, as you're ever likely to see, and Mike Dean in a perfect position, and there aren't really any complaints from Sheffield United. 
It's going to be taken by Dion Burton, who's gone 11 games without a goal. Can Paddy Kenny redeem himself here for the earlier error? Yes, he can. What a save. The referee, I think, thought for a moment there about whether Kenny had moved before the kick was taken. He had a good look at it, and he let it go. Well, you're allowed to move, but he steps off his line, and by the letter of the law, that penalty should be being taken again. Don't often see it. He scored in this game last year as well. And off comes Jermaine Johnson. Remarkable. A second yellow and a red card for Jermaine Johnson. And an extraordinary day here. Just got a little weirder. Stokes. First involvement, not a bad one. And just past the post by BT. Shepherd United thought for a moment there, so did their fans. A miserable night for Wednesday at Oakwell saw them behind after just four minutes. Devaney's run down the left and cross saw Buxton fail to clear the ball and Macken then fed Hume, who smashed the ball past Grant for the opener. 11 minutes before the break and the Owls went down to 10 men. Tony McMahon with a two-footed lunge, despite not making contact, was deemed by official Mr Crossley as having malicious intent and there was very little complaint from McMahon when he saw a straight red card. On the hour mark, Marcus Beavers pulled down Stephen Foster following a far side corner and the Kent official pointed straight to the spot. Jamal Campbell-Rice stepped up and sent the keeper the wrong way to double the Tykes' lead. Wednesday grabbed a consolation eight minutes later, a blatant pull back in the area left Mr Crossley no choice but to award the Owls a spot kick. And Leon Clark finished emphatically with his first touch of the game, but Wednesday couldn't find an equaliser. That's an excellent delivery and a fine header! Gary O'Connor again! Birmingham lead again! It is a Sayas! What a hit that is! been close to impossible for visitors to score on this ground this season. And Wednesday have managed it. Taylor, O'Connor, O'Connor! Oh, I say! Good man who've conceded as few. It's a lovely ball from Kudru, and Phillips is onside again, and this time makes no mistake. Elastically there, the Sheffield Wednesday goalkeeper. Pumped in by Buxton. Smith's arms were flailing, he could be in trouble here. He's already in the book, and he's off. And I'm not sure that Paul Taylor even showed a yellow. That may have been a straight red card. Francis Jeffers was recalled after a long-term injury and his shot on the turn was deflected over the bar as Wednesday looked for the breakthrough early on. Next to try his luck was Leon Clark who produced a stinging drive from long range only to see his shot flash inches wide of the post. Argyle then opened the score in contentious fashion. McNamee's header back into the area found ex Oles man Steve McLean, who looked to be offside, but beat Grant before offering no celebration in front of the Hillsborough supporters. Wednesday did get the ball in the net, but it was ruled out for a foul. Paul Sturrock's Plymouth inflicting the Owls' first home defeat of the season and second at the hands of Argyle in just 24 days. and started brightly, Watson finding Buxton on the right, 
When the defence failed to deal with the shot, Leon Clark was on hand to crush the ball home on just seven minutes. Eight minutes into the second half and Cambridgeshire official Mr Wright decided Shefki Kucci had been fouled into the box, much to the dismay of the travelling support. But Palace's Ben Watson took the spot kick and sent Lee Grant the wrong way to make it one apiece. The game opened up and both sides went close. Wednesday's Jamaican international Jermaine Johnson cutting in from the wing and smashing one off the crossbar. Brian Law celebrated his 100th game in charge of the Owls in this South Yorkshire derby and Leon Clark's early drive was smartly stopped by Sullivan. Clark then grabbed the goal and all three points as he headed home as Sayhas's left foot free kick from six yards out. Another bad away day for Sheffield Wednesday as their former boss Paul Jewell celebrated his biggest league win since he took over at Derby County a year ago. Chris Common scored the opening goal and had a big say in the second as Miles Addison put the finishing touch to the move. The third was the best of the lot, Jordan Stewart's 25-yard pile driver. It could have been a lot worse and Wednesday boss Brian Laws admitted he gave his team the hairdryer treatment afterwards. Wednesday could have scored in the opening minute, Boozalan and Clark clashing and the ball looped over Westwood's head onto the bar. McAllister though did find the net, albeit from an offside position, but keep your eye on Jeffers, who should surely have been awarded a penalty in the build-up. An hour on the clock and Chris Coleman's side opened the scoring. Clinton Morrison heading home from 12 yards out, leaving keeper Grant little chance at all. Wednesday threw everything at City and Jeffers' free kick from the edge of the box was tipped around the post by Westwood. A Tuesday night trip to Bloomfield Road proved just the thing for Brian Laws' side as they inflicted Blackpool's fourth consecutive defeat. A say has only on the field seconds beforehand to replace the injured Johnson, set up Tudguy for a header that would grace any highlight reel. And four minutes from time, it was a say has again the provider, this time finding Dion Burton at the far post, to head home unchallenged. Brian Laws extended his contract as manager of Sheffield Wednesday to 2011 during the week and he must have wondered why as his lacklustre side fell behind to Norwich at Hillsborough. Marcus Tudgay brought down Wes Houlihan and Sammy Klingon's penalty was emphatically struck. Laws must have produced the pep talk of all time at half-time. Within 10 minutes of the resumption, Tony McMahon had signed off his loan spell for Middlesbrough with an unstoppable header and Leon Clark had brushed off Gary Doherty to angle the Owls into an unlikely looking lead. The gloom may have been lifted, but the fog wasn't and Leroy Leiter emerged through the mist to slam in an equaliser for Glen Rhoda's side. The Norwich manager said he'd never been involved in a game of such contrasting form from two sides either side of an interval. He was appalled at the dozy defending that allowed Tudgay to send the Owls into the top half of the table. The red card shown to defender John Kennedy for grappling with Clark hardly improved his move but Laws was naturally more upbeat. The actual first half was like a morgue out there, um, but I said it half time. It wasn't the supporters that set, them, set the, the tone, it was the way we went out there, and uh, we were so off it, it was untrue, and there were so many players not on par. Manager Jan Portfleet fielded a youthful looking side for this encounter, but it didn't stop Bradley Wright Phillips from flying down the wing and curling one past Lee Grant after 14 minutes. Saints needed to win to avoid the tag of the worst start to their season in 88 years. And so when Marcus Tudgai stroked the ball home from 20 yards with three minutes left, things were looking bad for the South Coast outfit. And they could have been so much worse had on loan Hawthorne striker Slusarski managed to beat Kelvin Davis when cleaned through, the keeper getting a hand to the pole's venomous shot. Wednesday keeper Lee Grant had a big part to play in their 1-0 victory over Queen's Park Rangers. His first task was to stop Hyder Helgeson, capitalising on a poor clearance kick. 
QPR were the better side for much of the game, and when Sean McAllister fouled Helgerson in the box, it looked like their 700-minute wait for an away goal would come to an end. Martin Rowland's spot kick was hit hard, but far too straight, allowing Grant to make a vital save. Then, in the second half, Marcus Tudgay's shot was only half saved by Radek Cerny, and in stepped Leon Clark to grab the winner. That's three wins in the last four games for Wednesday, but boss Brian Laws still wants to see improvements. I want the mentality to, to be better and brighter, but you know, if, if we don't pass the ball well, of course we're not going to play well. City, with only one win in ten, were on the back foot from the start. Leon Clark slicing through the defence and forcing a good save from Basso. And following a dreadful error by the City back four, the ball eventually fell to Clark again, who this time fired wide from 15 yards out. Then Marcus Tudgai, wearing a bandage following a clash of heads, might have done better from a precise left-wing cross. And when Leon Clark failed to beat Basso from a tight angle late on, the Hillsborough stalemate was ensured. As Dave Jones's Bluebirds were looking to make it six unbeaten, and five minutes into the second half, Bothroyd headed down a Routledge cross for Johnson, his shot taking a horrible deflection, leaving Grant only able to spectate as Cardiff took the lead. With 65 minutes played, home side captain Joe Ledley was brought down while surging into the area. Leicestershire official Mr Friend pointing to the spot and there were no complaints from the Owls players. Michael Chopra dispatched the spot kick to double Cardiff's advantage, leaving Wednesday a mountain to climb. And despite their best efforts, they couldn't find a way through. This moment of confusion in the area, the nearest they came to beating Peter Enkelman. Boxing day at Hillsborough and over 25,000 turned out to see managerless Blackpool snatch a point. Simon Grayson's move to Leeds United, the last thing on Gary Taylor Fletcher's mind as he went close early on. It was Blackpool, though, who took the lead just three minutes into the second half, a deep nearside corner causing problems, and Lewis Buxton was adjudged to have fouled the inrushing Sean Barker. Alan Gow stepped up to take the kick, and the Tangerines led 1-0. Seven minutes later, Wednesday were back on term. Steve Watson's free kick volleyed home with the deftest of touches from lone man Slusarski. The last game of 2008 was at the Rico Arena, where Chris Coleman's Coventry haven't won since October. But when Boiserland found Morrison on 11 minutes and he beat Grant from a narrow angle, the signs were ominous. But the Owls surged back, Tudgai's cushioned header setting up McAllister to volley just wide from the edge of the area. And the lively Wade Small produced a mazy run and accurate shot, which was well saved by keeper Kieran Westwood. And as Wednesday committed men forward, they were caught on the counter, best finding the right ball for Robbie Simpson, who beat Grant low into the bottom corner. With everything you'd expect from an FA Cup game, Andy Johnson finishing off a neat passing move before slotting the ball under Lee Grant on 12 minutes. Ten minutes later, an Owls fullback Tommy Spur decided to test out the new football boots he got at Christmas, and with devastating effect too. Even Brian Laws getting in on the celebrations. Now back on level terms, the Owls were hungry for more. Jermaine Johnson should have found the target from this back post cross. Into the second half and the Cottagers fought back, Lee Grant saving superbly from Clint Dempsey's close-range effort, following a ball in from England man Johnson. But with only two minutes of normal time left, it was heartbreak for Wednesday as Andy Johnson grabbed his second, a poacher's finish, following a right-wing cross. Right at the death, though, Wednesday could have forced a replay had Francis Jeffers managed to poke the ball either side of Schwarzer. A valiant effort from the Owls, but it just wasn't to be.
Ipswich had lost two on the spin at Portman Road and the early signs were good for the Owls. Mark Beavers heading narrowly wide from Steve Watson's corner. Just moments later they were even closer. Gray's ball in from the left flank finding McAllister. His sliding effort was unlucky to dip just over Richard Wright's bar. Six minutes into the second period and the moment the travelling fans have been waiting for. Some slick footwork on the left wing from Johnson and a perfect cross allowing Steve Watson to head home his third goal of the campaign. But the Tractor boys managed to avoid a third straight home loss when Pablo Cunaga saw the ball bounce off him into the net on 66 minutes. Nearly 29,000 turned up at Hillsborough for the visit of rock bottom Charlton and they were in for a treat. Debutant Darren Potter marking his lone move from Wolves with his 16th minute stunner. And Wednesday went two up seven minutes before the break. 34-year-old Michael Gray providing the corner for Tudguy to notch his eighth of the season with a downward back post header. 18 minutes after the break and the Owls made it 3-0. It was Gray again who was signed on emergency loan for a month marauding down the right before crossing for Jeffers who beat Randolph from the highest of angles. The first of the season for the former England man. Charlton did manage to pull a goal back and a cracker it was too for Matthew Spring. But it was too little too late as Wednesday already had the points in the bag. And as if to make doubly sure when Marcus Tudguy was brought down in the area in stoppage time, he practically awarded himself the penalty. Scooping the ball up and placing it on the spot almost before Mr Deadman had the chance to award it. Tudguy's ninth of the campaign sent the Owls fans home happy after equalling their biggest win of the season, which happened on the opening day. Wednesday took the lead at the city ground in the 28th minute. Jermaine Johnson's effort following a far side corner, enough to guide the ball past Paul Smith. But the lead lasted only five minutes. Nathan Tyson racing through and picking his spot from the edge of the area to ensure the score would be level at the break. Forrest would have an extra man for the second half though as Francis Jeffers saw a straight red card for this dreadful challenge on Forrest Joe Heath. Few complaints from Jeffers who could hardly claim it was just poor timing. And with 15 minutes left, Billy Davis's side got the winner, a right wing cross met by the head of Chambers, who scored via the base of the post. Birmingham should have taken the lead in this encounter. Good passing down the left flank sent Cameron Jerome clear, but his shot was off target. A let off for the Owls. Into the second half and Lewis Buxton celebrated signing permanently for the club during the week by notching his first goal for the Owls, heading home after his first effort had been parried. It could have been 2-0 too. Marcus Tudguy's snapshot from 20 yards whistled over Mike Taylor's crossbar. Wednesday seemed to have the game won, but in injury time Sinclair's cross found Kevin Phillips, who bundled in at the back post to alleviate the pressure on boss Alex McLeish. Owls will take it right footed and it goes in towards the edge of the box and Tudgate who gets up but beaten in the air by Kilgallen. Sent back out to the right and Michael Gray, the 34-year-old drags it back with the right boot, can come to Tommy Spar! Oh, a first-minute goal for Tommy Spar and Sheffield Wednesday! The Owls Academy product drives it home and the Blades are stunned and Tommy Spurs loving it! Sheffield Wednesday have the lead at Bramall Lane, a minute in, Tommy Spur scores, Blades nil, Wednesday won! Un uh, what can I say, Seth? Uh, what a score. I don't think United have, have kicked the ball. Full credit to Michael Gray. He's been composed on the ball. He's just fired a low cross in. Tommy Spur completely unmarked. You know, that's the sort of shot, the sort of effort that could have gone high into the stand. Kept his calm and drilled it past and left Paddy Kenny. No chance. What a start. Here's a long throw from Halford. Speared in deep and there's Lee Grant. He's let it go. He's gone in, is it? Can United turn it home? They can't. The goal's being given. 
and the Blades have equalised. I think it's going to be the new man, Arturo Lupoli, who gets his name on the score sheet. It was a scrappy one, but the long throw works wonders. And after four minutes in the Steel City derby, it's been electric stuff. Wednesday open their account, and then Arturo Lupoli for the Blades. Sheffield United 1, Sheffield Wednesday 1. Ball going to be delivered in from the sunshine. It's high, it's arcing, it's looping towards Lupoli. Now here's Montgomery just wide. That would have been some goal on the volley from the edge of the D. I'd, have, I'd have never have given him any criticism ever again if that had gone in. <laughs> here's the long throw from Halford. It's speared into that box. It breaks. Is there a man pulled down in the box? Falls back. Shot comes off the post from Bromby. Nearly found the top corner. Well, the Blades had, first of all, a shout for a penalty. And second of all, they've hit the woodwork here as here's Leon Clark bringing the ball down and tries to find Tudgay. Tudgay pokes it out to Gray. Wednesday on the attack, in front of the cop at Bramwell Lane, curled in back post, here's Leon Clark! Oh! Great chance, he got around the back of Norton, he poked it into the fans behind the Wednesday, uh, behind Paddy Kenny, should I say, in that United goal. Superb cross from Michael Gray, done everything right, stood it up at the far post. Here's Howard, 10 yards outside the Wednesday penalty area, surrounded by blue and white. Tackle by Gray and Wednesday clear over halfway. Kilgallen wins it but gives it straight to Tudgay, who now motors forward. Clark trying to get in position for him and Tudgay oh! What a goal! It's absolutely world class from Marcus Tudgay on the right boot in the top corner. Paddy Kelly absolutely no chance. It's an absolute screamer. And Marcus Tudgay goes and celebrates with the Wednesday fans behind the goal down the other end of the field. But it's Marcus Tudgay's 10th goal of the season and possibly best goal of the season Blades 1, Wednesday 2 Absolutely speechless that goal has spoke for itself Paul you can't describe it there aren't the words to describe that goal that is absolutely unbelievable what a strike in such a game like this Michael Gray has been a joy to watch since his arrival at Hillsborough every single game every single game Makes you realise how good a side Wolves are, though, if they don't need him. Here comes a floated cross into the box. It falls to Clark oh! off the post! Thunder the volley! And it's ricocheted out for a blade throw on the right-hand side. Desperate. Absolutely. What a chance. Desperate. He's good little flick on, and Clark's reacted superbly. Great volley. Kind of nothing outside of the post. Well, it's one post each. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> With only four minutes gone, Gray's chip and Clark's layoff created a wonderful chance for O'Connor, who could only volley over from ten yards out. Rovers, who had won five of their last six league games, looked certain to score when Coppinger and Wellens combined to put in Heffernan, and he sliced over from three yards out. On the half-hour mark, and with the Owls' defence again at sixes and sevens, Heffernan made amends for his earlier miss, heading home Coppinger's right-wing cross. Doncaster very nearly, though, had to settle for a point as Jermaine Johnson's cross was headed against the bar by Leon Clark. Barnsley were yet to win in 2009 and hadn't won at Hillsborough for 26 years. But Jamal Campbell-Rice had other ideas as his run and shot found the roof of the Owls' net in the 38th minute. Into the second half and Jermaine Johnson tried to emulate his countryman's goal, only for the Barnsley keeper Heinz Muller to put it out for a corner. Nearly 26,000 fans at Hillsborough were willing Wednesday to equalise, and they very nearly did. Tudgai chipping over Muller, only to see his goal-bound effort scrambled off the line by last-ditch Barnsley defending. Warnock's Eagles went close early on through Victor Moses, who somehow need the ball against Grant's upright. And in the 69th minute, the woodwork was the Owls' saviour again. This time, Hill's header from Oster's set piece, rebounding from the base of the post. And with the game heading towards a stalemate, Wednesday committed men forward and got a deserved breakthrough. Simek's long throw caused the Palace defence problems, and McAllister rifled home after Clark's header fell nicely for him. 
And Wednesday made sure of all three points in injury time. Johnson was set free down the right and crossed for Clark, whose flick beat Spironi in the Palace goal and sparked the home fans' celebrations. Williams. It's difficult control when it first came to him. Gray trying to get Spur on his way behind the uh, absent right back. Reese Williams is getting back now. Here's Tutke. It's opened up a little bit here for Tutke. It's Sheffield Wednesday who take the lead. Marcus Tutke, who scored twice against Burnley on the opening day of the season at Hillsborough, has scored the opener here. Tucked it away very tidily indeed. Reese Williams was caught out of position. Tommy Spur got beyond the opposite fullback. And Tudgay, with very little to aim at, managed to guide the ball past Brian Jensen's left hand and inside his left hand post. Duff Williams and Caldwell are all in there. It's awkward for Grant and Burnley are on terms! Chris McCann! Potter. Back in by McAllister, no flag, Tuggy! Sheffield Wednesday back in front, and it's Marcus Tuggy again, with two goals against Burnley again. Wonderful opportunism. He was definitely onside. His first touch was the key. Brought it under his spell. And then as Brian Jensen came out to try to shut down the angle, Tudgay for the second time this afternoon. He guided it past him. He thought his winner against Sheffield United three weeks ago was the high spot of his season. He may just have betted it here. Come here for Clark. Oh, he hit that brilliantly. That's a wondrous goal from Leon Clark. A goal he's deserved. But a goal that was absolutely unstoppable. And Brian Laws is about to engineer another victory over Burnley. Just hit it instinctively rolled away from Duff and then crashed it past her helpless Jensen and that's what Leon Clark is capable of and fairness the Burnley keeper he did get a hand on it oh he enjoyed that Alexander shot blocked and here they go again Johnson has freed Leon Clark they won 4-1 on the opening day of the season it's 4-1 again Marcus scored twice in no time at all. And Sheffield Wednesday are having a party at Turf Moor. Ryan Laws tries to look philosophical behind that goal. Wednesday fans look jubilant. And Leon Clark calmly rolled it in. Might even have kissed the goalpost on its way. It's a lovely finish, not as spectacular as the one a moment ago, but nonetheless, for a right-footed player, two marvellous left-footed finishes. He's set up for Eagles. Oh, not a marvellous goal. We're being spoiled this afternoon. It's 4-2. Nearly took the lead through Stephen Hunt's free kick early in the first half. But in first half stoppage time it was the Owls who took the lead, Leon Clark holding the ball up nicely before laying it off to Sean McAllister, whose first time shot was unstoppable. Ten minutes after the restart and the Royals were back on terms. 
Matiuski's corner was flicked on for Kevin Doyle to nod in at the back post. And shortly after came a major moment of controversy. Referee Mr Hall waved play on after what seemed like an obvious foul. It's obvious in fact even the cameraman stopped for a second before catching up just in time to see Clark score at the other end. The referee's assistant chalked the goal off, much to the bemusement of the Wednesday striker. With nine minutes to go, Wednesday lost the ball in midfield and the visitors capitalised. Substitute Shane Long arrowing the ball home after Stephen Hunt's ball found them in the area. The drama didn't end there though. In stoppage time, Owls keeper Lee Grant joined the attack and in the melee that followed saw a shot cleared off the line and the towering header drift agonisingly wide. The Wednesday defence was left asking questions of themselves after just five minutes. Midfielder Michael Kitely was able to pick out Ebanks Blake at the back post for a simple finish. Jermaine Johnson was guilty of missing a glorious chance to equalise though. After dancing through the Wolves' defence, he fired well over from 12 yards out. And the Jamaican had a chance to make amends for his error, only to see his 18-yard shot saved following a cutback from Tudguy. Brian Laws' men took a deserved lead at Deepdale on the half-hour mark, Sean McAllister getting the better of Eddie Nolan before finding Jeffers, who finished coolly for his second goal of the season. Then, when Michael Gray couldn't see an obvious pass, he set his sights from long range, bringing a great one-handed save from Lonergan in the Preston goal. North End nearly forced an equaliser just before the break. A left-wing cross from Wallace found the head of Parkin, who saw his effort come back off the bar before being poked out for a corner. Into the second half and Jermaine Johnson went close after carving his way through the defence. He let fly with a right foot curler which grazed the outside of the post. And then in the second minute of injury time all the Owls hard work was undone. Chris Sedgwick's first time shot was bravely blocked by Wood before Parkin's low shot found the corner of the net and the home fans started to celebrate. Brian Laws was very vocal in his complaints to the West Midlands referee. Mr Penn sent him to the stands with only seconds left on the clock, much to the dismay of the Wednesday boss. Uh, Michael Gray, arm up in the air, against the corner, and Loach fumbles it, and it's gone in from Marcus Tudgay. 13th of the season for Tudgay, and very much unlucky for Scott Loach. Early ball, Williamson in the way. Harley had a look, didn't find any movement. Priskin had to check, could get the other side of Beavers, who's put it in his own net. Wow, what a strange goal! And doesn't get it clear, only as far as Don Cowie. Cowie's cross, McEnough's there, Jeremy McEnough scores, and Wofford are in front. Cowie's looping cross, but he couldn't find him. Cement now for Johnson. Harley goes down. It's Jermaine Johnson goes down under challenge. No, says the referee. Williamson locked. Harley locked it. Now he's given the penalty. Here comes Francis Jeffers. Been the villain of the piece this afternoon as far as the Watford fans are concerned. Can he live up to his reputation? Yes, he does. It's 2-2. And we've had equalisers in injury time at the end of both halves. Jermaine Johnson's pace caused early problems for the Swans' defence as he probed down the right flank, and his cross-come shot could only be parried by Doris de Vries. Michael Gray found himself through on goal, but he couldn't find the shot to beat the Swansea custodian. 
Lee Grant was then at his best, diving away to his left to keep out this set piece. And with only 10 minutes left, Richard Hines must have thought he'd won it, only to see De Vries pull off a remarkable save one-handed and have the presence of mind to block Tudgai's follow-up. Nil-nil. Norwich denied two penalties and had a seemingly good goal chalked off as the Owls took the points. Homekeeper Marshall making a great save from 13 goal Marcus Tudgai. Just after the break, the visitors went in front. Johnson picking up the loose ball following a long cross and after showing some tenacity to lose right back Lee Croft, he hit a drive from 18 yards which deflected off Art Summerbore into the Canaries' goal. Then came the disallowed goal. Maybe the sun got in the eyes of referee Mr Russell, but it's difficult to see why David Mooney's goal wasn't allowed to stand for relegation threatened Norwich. Tommy Spur was dismissed late on for the visitors, this challenge earning him a second booking, but Wednesday were able to hang on and complete a league double over City. The Rams' defence was in disarray following this cross from Lewis Buxton. O'Connor got the flick, only to see Tudgai's well-struck volley cannon off McEverley before the second effort drifted over. Darren Potter then saw his free kick crash back off the crossbar. Again, the Derby defence struggling to get the ball clear. On the stroke of half-time, the visitors went in front. Gary Teal's free kick headed in at the near post by Rob Hulse following a foul on Chris Commons. Hulse was equally instrumental in defence too as he somehow managed to block Tudgai's goal-bound effort with his left thigh. The Owls took the lead in the 35th minute at Loftus Road. An Etienne Esejas corner confusing the QPR captain who headed past his own keeper whilst under no real pressure. And Wednesday doubled their advantage in the 53rd minute, Darren Deadman awarding a penalty after Stuart and Clark had tangled in the box. Tudgai going straight down the middle to beat Radek from 12 yards. But managerless QPR, who had dismissed Paolo Souza only four days prior to the game, hit back in style to win 3-2. Rowan Bine got the first back as Rangers went on to win 3-2. Perfectly observed minutes silence for the 20th anniversary of the Hillsborough disaster left both players and supporters alike in reflective mood before this game started. But when it did get underway, the Owls were the better team from the off. And when Jeffers sent Derby loanee Luke Varney clear after 23 minutes, there was only ever going to be one outcome. And Varney again should have made it 2-0 shortly after, somehow managing to put Esejas' cross wide when it seemed easier to hit the target. Southampton's best chance fell to Jason Ewell, but he couldn't beat Lee Grant from just a few yards out. Varney then signed off his lone spell in style. Two defenders both went for the same throw and got in each other's way, leaving Varney to round Kelvin Davis and slot into an open goal. A slick passing move and a crisp finish gave City the lead at Ashton Gate. It was started and finished by Lee Johnson, son of manager Gary, but City were struggling to hold their formation, playing 4-5-1 with just Nicky Maynard up front. Wednesday left it very late to reply, but when it came it was worth the wait. Darren Potter, the goal scorer, with a scorcher of a free kick in the 88th minute. Cardiff needed just a point to guarantee a playoff spot and when Roger Johnson hit the bar from Whittingham's corner it looked as though Purse must score from the follow-up but it was deflected over the bar. 
And with 90 minutes left on the clock, Jermaine Johnson gave the 30,000-plus crowd what they'd been waiting for. Spurs' cross was headed clear by Purse, and Johnson smashed a pile driver past Tom Heaton from 20 yards out.